I know how hard it is to build startups. And do you plan to launch any products? I don't know. Yeah, you know, with the money on the table. Something like that. That's, that's what I usually do. Yeah, that's expensive. This yeah. is what I'm looking for. This yeah, project. yeah. Very, very cool. And so let's start. When did you start Product Done? Um, about 15, 16 months ago. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a very young company? It's very like, young it's, company. It's less than two years? Less than two years, Okay, yes. how many employees do you have at the moment? About eight, nine. Eight, nine, nine, nine employees and then... All right. Um, stuff. Small team, yeah. So, and the reason you started it, why? Because I know how hard it is to build startups. I've built myself and I've had some success and I thought, okay, I can do the same thing for others. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Model is uh, the agency model. How do you, uh, how would you describe the agency model? Of it's it's a bit different than agency model. We kind of work with really early stage. They don't um, entrepreneurs. They don't want to go to an agency. So we work as if they are, we are their co-founder or a CTO kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we provide them with all the necessary tools. Well, support but still, everything. still, still, CTO agency. Kind of, yeah, agency, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So it's just... It's what, what, what's important in an agency model? In this kind of agency model, what's the most important? Uh, um, just, you know, providing them with the with their guidance and, and advice. It's, it's very different. Our clients don't look for a typical agency pixel perfect things. If you go to a typical agency, they would look for really, really perfect like you know perfection they they don't want something wonky or something mm -hmm. but for us our clients it's getting the mvp out getting it done in a very very limited budget well so i, I know a bunch of agencies that uh, do mvps as well yes yeah so it's but, yeah. but this one is dedicated to that I yeah yeah uh, do you plan to launch any products uh, maybe in with, future with, within this company. Yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe some in tools future. to to help startuppers. Yes, start. yes. We we will, but we want to do it right. As in, we want to really find the problem. Mm -hmm. So you know, we want to solve a problem. I we can, don't want to I, just I build something. I can give something. you an idea about the problem. Like, yeah, uh, go, go lack, ahead. Lack of vision. Yes. Lack of uh, yeah. Uh, lack of um, uh, complete uh, understanding of uh, how the product should work. Or maybe a lack of experience working with requirements. So yes. if you if you can let's say gather those requirements and put them somehow in a box, yes, so that it's clear for the uh, for the uh, agency people, for the agency the, or yes. to, to to for you, yourself to understand what exactly they want, that yes. would be a great product. So just work with the with the requirements. Or yeah, may, or maybe put for putting together requirements and UI designs and business logic. Yes. And, I'm sure there are such products, but maybe they can be implemented at a short, short uh, smaller, like limited scale limited for, uh, for scale. MVPs. Yeah, that yeah. Cool. So, um, how that? Um, so, for example, mm -hmm. um, say I'm the client, and um, or I'm the person using this product. It will ask me questions, and and then based on those, it will make the specification of what this product will have. Something like that. Mm -hmm. But no, yeah. no, no specific products in mind yet. No, no specific products in mind yet. Yes, um, we we do get ideas all the time, but we do control to not get distracted and focus on our primary objective. On your, on your and yes, and also, um, also we want to make sure that the the need exists and that people will use it. Mm -hmm. um, something that they it will be useful to them. Like you know, because I see this all the time, founders build something just because they have an idea not because they really want to solve a problem some, some don't even bother to 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 make a market research yes and yes. they start building something that already exists yes. which they are not aware of yes <laughs> yeah, but it is, is, it is this happens all the time market research is hard though because people will say all sorts of things <laughs> you know because they are nice to you so they'll say oh yeah this is a good idea yeah, yeah. but you know the real market research is when you ask them for oh so do you want to feedback do you wanna, from, from fr friends and 
then we will yeah. always be positive. <laughs> yes, or sure. or even strangers because strangers want to be nice to you as well. Like you know, no one wants to be mean. They don't even know you. So. Maybe it's an idea for another agency or another company to yes. uh, like the people that, who tell you the truth about yes. your idea. Your yes. idea is. You know how to get to people to tell you the truth? Ask them for money. You say, oh, if it's such a good idea, do you want to pay me fifty dollars to sign up for a subscription? And if they do, that is then it's a really good idea. If they don't. Yeah, with the money on the table. Yeah, with the money some, on the not, table. Not sometime in the future. Yeah, not sometime. Right now, like you know, if if they do that, then it's a good idea. If they don't, if they say, oh, sorry, I need to go, I need to get a call, <laughs> then then it's <laughs> then you know the answer. All right, all right. Yes, uh, yes, speaking right. of uh, cultural differences, uh, while we not uh, we are not yet yes. at the hiring and uh, staff um, uh, section. And the cultural differences between uh, India and New Zealand, yes. business-wise, what, what uh, would you, how would you describe them? Oh, that's a that's a hard did, did, one. Did you get to work somewhere in India or um, very young? Very little, students? very 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 you little. Still just little. for like six months. So or you, you like haven't. Like, but um, I still go there job, yeah. nearly every couple of years, and I've worked in US as well, worked in Australia a bit as well, like just just with different companies promoting products there, staying there months mm -hmm. two months here mm -hmm. in, in Silicon and Valley on and off and all that, um, and just like traveling with you. Um, oh, massive massive cultural differences. Um, yeah, uh, I just want to know how New Zealand is uh, different from the rest of the world. Oh, New, um, if, if you could describe that in a few points. New Zealand is very, very small, like five million people, um, and so here a lot of the business is done through word of mouth, and you, you know, have to like, know people. You have to know people who know people who know. So it's like over my. But in a small community, maybe also cold messaging should uh, work, right? Sorry, like Co cold messaging. Like, like cold call calling, cold messaging as a um, less as a sales medium. Yeah, less, less. It is um, to just to give you an insight in New Zealand. Yeah, most of the jobs never get advertised. They all go through people. Do you know someone? Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Here, education is not as important as local experience. So if someone comes as a new immigrant, they might have PhD. Doesn't matter. Um, they would take someone who hasn't completed school but has one year of experience over a master's or a PhD for most jobs. Of course, things are different if you're a doctor or something where it's needed, mm -hmm. but like tech and stuff, yeah, experience trumps everything else. But there, there should also be a massive lack of uh, resources on, on the te technical side, like hu human resources. Oh, there are, there are, there are massive lack. So there's, it's really hard to find people and all that stuff, yeah. Then they're so, gonna take everyone. <laughs> um, still, they first go through. Hey, do you know someone who's this kind of thing? So, so first, always, is, always. first is always that, and if it doesn't work, then word of mouth. Word of mouth. But that's in every business and anything. They want a tradie. You want a tradie to fix your something in the house. Or do you know someone who's a good? Yeah. So that always. It's. it's I'm, very, I'm happy that uh, word of mouth and hiring has popped up because my next question is uh, about your company. What was your first hire? That's product done. Uh, first hire was from the parent company Orchid, so we just moved, uh, we started moving employees from there to product uh, that, one by one. Easy. <laughs> that easy. was easy, but then the, but the last week we hired one from more. Outside. Yeah, last week also we hired one, and that was just through advertising, and so we did that word of mouth first, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then that we didn't find someone, and then. Uh, and was it was it what level of an employee? A was junior, that? junior level. Junior. So just straight out of university. Because I'm wondering what it takes to hire a senior or a middle level uh, oh. software developer. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Because <laughs> we we hired from the pre parent company all all the senior level ones. <laughs> and on the team, do you own, only have software developers or other any different and roles? And designers. And just designers. no no sales and marketing. And the designers were also. Um, uh, 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 migrated over from the um, parent company. Um, one or two, yes, and then one or two we hired from outside, and then so then we got all the CVs, and then we kept them, the extra ones that we didn't hire to use them as contractors. They said, oh yeah, they're cool for contract work, always mm -hmm. on part time. So we have a lot of uh, overflow if we without the overheads, mm -hmm. without the risk. 
And who, so, who who's taking care about the HR and recruitment? And oh, just things. Bill and I, just the founders, just the, founders, the two founders, yeah. yes. And, and During I, the first I, two years, it makes sense to do it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Of course. All right. Uh, in two years, I, I don't know if it makes sense to ask you about delegating, like delegating your duties. Um, uh, do you have to do that yet, or not? Not a lot. Yourself, because yeah, you don't yeah. have anyone to delegate. To. Um, um, we delegate in between the founders. So, um, if you're like good at writing content, so Bill can write content. I can do some of the other stuff like LinkedIn, video, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we just do that. I go out and speak at events and things like that all the time. Just mm -hmm. network out because I enjoy that. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, so that's why immediately it's, it's, like it's oh yeah let's of go. course yes that's, up, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I usually do when yeah, yeah, someone yeah. is reaching out to me I'm like yes let's meet it should be yeah fun. yeah just because for fun. as yeah. I told you I can learn something new I can get yeah. an insights which uh, which it would take me an effort to come up with myself yeah. so yeah and so far you haven't had any staff to turn over right you just no, it's no. the same team you <laughs> same team because you it's so with, new yeah, yeah because so otherwise new. it would yeah, be yeah. too fast right all right. Uh, sales section. Yes. Uh, how do you normally start the project? Um, uh, people contact us pretty much most what, what of the time. What happens after that? Um, yeah, we just sit down with them and just understand what they want to build and, and it is on a case by case basis. Every entrepreneur is different. A lot of the times they don't even have any money. So they okay. So what help do you? How, how do you work with that? <laughs> um, we don't. <laughs> no, we. I mean, most cases like that, we cannot. Um, then we. I just you know, just as a as a human being, I just have a catch up with them and just as guide them, like you know, this is what you need to raise money. The easiest way, the first step, is friends and family. Um, for most for most people, um, they won't get angel funding just based on idea or seed funding based on an idea. Most people won't. Unless you are really well known, uh, then money is no problem because if you are well known, is there an ecosystem in New Zealand for that? Startup There's lots of seed ecosystem. funding options in New Zealand, lots of seed, but there is maybe two two places for VC funding. So uh, you know, New Zealand is really really easy to giving you insights about New Zealand. You asked me earlier. Now I thought, um, it's really easy to launch a business to start a business. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two hours you can start a company, doesn't matter where you're from. Yeah, many countries are moving this direction. Yes. Already. And so, but New Zealand's been like this always. It has always been like this. Like, no bureaucracy, nothing, just immediately. How, how difficult is it to stay afloat after that? Yes, that is the big question because any company needs two key things, like any startup needs two key things to survive. One is market and the second one is capital. It's like, you know, um, like this shoe I'm wearing, it's all birds. Um, it's kind of started here in New Zealand, but they never even registered their company here because they know they've got 5 million people, 20,000 will buy their shoes. Yeah, that's it, the market is gone. Can, can yeah. yeah, so that's why they went straight to US where there is the the market, you know, 300 plus they, million. They, and China, yeah, they, that's the, the largest dream. in the world. Yeah, yeah. So, so now that's why they are like, multi-billion dollar company um maybe new so zealand can be a good uh test sand, sandbox yeah market yes to, to that's test, exactly test what it's used for mm -hmm. so a lot of um, even larger companies tech companies they test their product here because it's a developed country really easy to set up and do anything you know so whether it is um space tech or self-driving or oh, doesn't matter what it is it's really really easy to do a test case and even with fintech a lot of them have been tested here mm -hmm. um, but it like depends on the legislation and, um, how per permissive it is for it is fintech it is companies. Um, it is pretty good and pretty easy because the the fintech lobby is is quite um, it, it has done really really good steps to work with the government I have an observation about the fintech space yes. here uh, almost uh, no place I have been to so far yes. like a restaurant or bar would accept uh, pay wave what you call here yeah in Ukraine like every terminal is uh, e equipped with uh, we call it uh, pay pass yes yeah so you can just pay with your mobile phone and here yes. no. I, you can have you know why because the the banks here 
charge another 1.5% to the merchant. In other points, for yes. the fintech industry. Yes. Like this is what you have to get rid of to be yes. able to test the product. So the, there's only like So the lobby is not that strong, right, so far? Yeah. So if the, cannot, no, the thing if, is they if don't If they cannot care. get rid of the commission. Okay. So the thing is that New Zealand was one of the first one to have like the F post card. So even like, you know, 15 years ago, I carried no cash. Whereas anywhere else in the world I travel, I had to carry cash mm -hmm. because everywhere was F post card. And so everyone migrated to the, the zero fees, all that. So New Zealand was one of the like the test case. Mm -hmm. And since now everyone has the F post card, there was n there wasn't that much of an incentive to move from that to the to the pay wave to the phone. Mm -hmm. Like whereas the the jump from the cash to to, to card is is quite big. Um, and so that is already kind of saturated. So there is, and, and just 5 million, once again, there is no market. It's not strong enough incentive for any big company Shop, yeah, to yeah, do yeah. anything. And, and that comes up again and again, it's that it's a good to test, but then you move immediately after that. You, you move to a bigger market. You have to go to China, US, all that, you know, all that. Um, you need the volume. And then the second is capital. There is not enough capital. There's capital only at seed stage, like, you know, 300,000, 1 million max. Um, if you want VC funding, you have to be in US, China, or India. That That's pretty much about all right, it. All right. So speaking of sales, uh, getting customers is uh, word of mouth, the book, uh, with the website. Yeah, all, all the, that. Yeah, all was the main channel. Bit, bit, bit of, we do a bit of um, adverts as well, but mm -hmm. not a lot. Google? You know? Yeah, Google. That AdWords. is expensive. Yeah, that's expensive, but we don't do much, you know. It, it, How many get, uh, leads do you get per week? A week, maybe um, organic or organic, yes, organic, maybe about six, seven, mm -hmm. and then three, four, three, four on adverts, but that's fine, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And why are you doing so so good on uh, organic? You, you've done some uh, SEO, um, no, not much. We have like what three blog articles, <laughs> we have all sorts of um, like. Um, I, I go to speak at events and stuff as mm -hmm. well and just a bit of networking, bit of events, bit of website and then we have got like free tools and stuff that we did earlier um, that we're going to take down because we're getting too many rubbish leads out of that <laughs> that waste time because you don't want wrong leads you know because they can waste and eat up time yeah. um, we have an so. assessment uh, approach in our mm. company uh, I think it's it's standard and it's called uh, it's called b b b band B A N T. It's budget authority. Uh, yes. Something my sales team knows better. Yes. And this is how you rule out those leads that are not relevant, who don't have the budget, or that they don't. Or have, only authority. the people who are talking to you are not in the position to decide. Yes. What is it? Budget the authority. I don't remember the rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's called B A N T. B A N T. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So time. You, you, like you, I think one is the time, time, time as well. Like they don't want to do it instantly. Yeah. But we get all the time people who don't have authority in the company. They're really motivated but they they don't have authority yeah. or, or the budget so yeah that that's common and you'd get a lot more in in the sector that we are in with the budget thing right, right. so um and how uh, long have you guys been in business yes 15 years I started, 15 years i started wow. this company in 2005 oh very still, very good yeah yeah good. oh very good um do you have other offices as well, apart from Ukraine? Uh, no, I only have two offices in Ukraine, yes. in two cities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the all, six, all staff based? All of them, including the sales. Including the sales, because yeah, it's yeah. quite common for Indian companies, I've seen like outsourcing mm -hmm. ones, to have a satellite office and have salespeople in the US. Um, or, I, I, or, I tried, or UK, that. Or, I tried yeah. that a few times, it didn't work out. Why? So, so I decided to just, because yeah. it was a waste of money. I yeah. uh, I think uh, it set me back by I don't know twenty five grand uh, each time. And yeah. uh, I it's not expensive though. Twenty five grand is not much. Twenty five grand? Well, 
it, it, I don't know. If, if for an exercise that doesn't bring you any business, it's expensive. Yeah, yeah. Because with 25 grand in Ukraine, with my sales guys, I can uh, come do to a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, 25 grand in AdBuzz would do a lot. A or or like this, or, yes. or in marketing, or in content yeah. marketing. Or content. Oh, you yeah. get so much content out of that. Mm -hmm. You get like whole year of content, you know, every exactly, day. Exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. And this is how you are getting organic leads, which are better because they're warm. Yes, and, uh, they are interested right away. So uh, your customers are mostly from New Zealand, all of them, one hundred percent. No, no, we get overseas all the time. I mean, inquiries, but a lot of them have been time wasters mm -hmm. um, because there is no um, no trust. New Zealand, there is trust because they come and see us and they see that okay, we have a team. It's not mm -hmm. just we are outsourcing. Um, and and yeah, so I'll talk to you about later about that as well. But mm -hmm. that's a different topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, this one is relevant for the interview. You can, yes, yes. You can elaborate on this. Yeah. But let's let's move on. Uh, so the type of customers are uh, startups with budget yes. or without budget who needs an MVP build who needs yes. an MVP build. Then, uh, uh -huh. um, if it's okay, how do you price your services? Uh, so like it, it depends on what they want built <laughs> it could be anything you know well um, it's a typical app i mean yes yeah, so what, what there do has you to guys... be a system right well yeah. which we charge uh per hour yes uh, uh on the on the time and material basis so yeah, yeah. we first of course we estimate the effort yes. but we estimate it as a, as a range so yes. from x to y and yes. hours and based on that we uh we also uh, uh quote the budget for uh, yes. f for the project right and this is how we manage our uh, customers expectations but then we charge uh, we build by the hour so yes. in the end of each month we uh, we just uh, export the hours of, from our internal tracker yes. and uh, we multiply them by the hourly rate and we send yes. it out we um, tried to do that but then the um, like the individual entrepreneurs or our founders they have been burnt by like another like a bad experience somewhere mm -hmm. like you know they started to develop and then the project got out of hand and they ended up with and then they got scared and then they left with an unbuilt product and then they had to start all over again and they spent already well an, a, an alternative would be fixed quote yeah yeah so we do a bit of fixed quote um, but we try and um, manage their expectations so it does take a bit more of a hands-on it's like that hey look we'll have to remove all these features but if you want all these back so we give them the control that okay if any time you add a feature it will cost you this many hours more mm -hmm. yeah so you quote it first uh, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah. Bless you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, hourly so, based, yes. and then uh, you uh, execute the project as a fixed code. Yeah, as a, as a fixed code, but then they can add more because they always do this feature creep. You know, all products have Sco so. scope creep. This is scope exactly creep. why why we dropped yeah. this practice entirely. Yeah, yeah. Like we don't do fixed code. So we are anymore. still as as we are still early stage. We are still like playing around mm -hmm. and trying a few different models and stuff and see what works. Um, yeah. All right. What are the hourly rates in uh, in New Zealand? Um, anywhere from eighty dollars to two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, average would be around one twenty to one fifty. We are still cheaper. <laughs> yeah, of course. Eastern, Eastern Europe is still cheaper, but not as cheap as it used to be. So yeah, nowadays yeah. we charge fifty bucks uh, US. You uh, so that would be around eighty dollars. Which is which is still yeah, which yeah. is still. Cheaper. So if you go to an uh, individual. No, this is. I was giving New Zealand dollars to you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So yeah, in US is like twenty five percent less. So, um, um, what's the like? If you go to a like a individual engineer, software mm -hmm. person, so one person, yeah. just a contractor, they might if you know them and they might charge you eighty dollars, mm -hmm. um, which is around fifty dollars US. Um, but then if you go to um, an agency or go to an agency, they'll charge you on average if it's a really big agency, $180, mm -hmm. um, really small agency, $120 and mm -hmm. most in between. So I'll give you a rough yeah, estimate. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, so that's, that's New Zealand dollars. So then you, you know, um, 65% of that is US. <laughs> so it's still it's still not as expensive. I think US can be more expensive, especially Bay Area. I've experienced a lot. That one more. is through the roof. Yeah, yeah. So um 
and that's why we get a lot of inquiries from the US. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, how often do you travel or your employees travel? Um, for, I used to work? travel a lot more for my other businesses and we haven't been traveling a lot because we've been just so busy and focused at building the team and there's just still so much demand here to mm -hmm. you know fulfill and stuff. But yeah, we'll be traveling later in the year to go to a few more conferences and stuff. What I'm trying to do is build my own brand, um, be known as an author and so I get as a, invited as a speaker because that is a lot more useful mm -hmm. um, when I go to a conference I can only meet so many people one-on-one -on -one, but if I'm a speaker I meet like everyone what do you normally about. speak about at conferences um, because I've been pondering this but I never uh, yes I, I, never MVP, I, I would because your, you have to find what your niche is, you know. So my niche is startups and MVP and all that. So I will speak about that. But, you know, your niche might be on, on B2B um, and, you know, how you can increase the productivity in your company by using technology or something like mm -hmm. that. And then you might suggest them a B2B SaaS product app or something to build. We specialize in, in SaaS. SaaS, products, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what's the sort of the average range of a completed project like a SaaS product? What do you mean the range? Um, like, what would it cost um, a corporate? Um, that's that's very difficult to estimate because SaaS yeah. products are so diff different. Like once yes. we were, uh, we had we had a project that ran for seven years and it still continues, but uh, yes. they, they took it in house. And in those seven years, I don't even remember how many hours we spent or how much much yes. money they burned with us. But it's a solid product. It's still it's yeah. still uh, in use. It's still in development, and uh, it's called Page Freezer. Page so Freezer. It's, uh, it's a web uh, or archi website archiving tool. Oh, yeah. cool. And yeah. uh, what's cool about it is that it takes every uh, asset, every uh, picture, or yes. every page, and it timestamps it. So that uh, they can be used as uh, as an evidence in court. Yes. Oh, very very cool. So yeah. that's very valuable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that um, one cost I I don't know well up to maybe I think well over half a million. Well, yeah. But it, it was it, 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 so it was a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. But do you get any smaller projects? Like we we get only small. You know, it's of like course we do. Stage. Of course yeah. we do. We. We try not to uh, not to take on projects that are one month or two month long, yes. but uh, they can be as short as, as three months or six three, months. Three or yeah. uh, six months is probably yeah. the average. Yeah, and uh, it's fine. You can plan them out well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can execute according to the schedule unless something unexpected happens, yeah. or if you yeah. depend on a third party which doesn't deliver. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now, so just find your niche, I would say, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you are selling to corporates, just see a cross section of your clients, what is the main problem you have solved, mm -hmm. and just start talking this about is, This that. is on my list this year, yeah, because yeah. I've been Look, hearing, anytime, hearing about finding a, a niche. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so that we had to do the same, you know, find a niche. We cannot sell everyone in the world. All things to all people. All things to all people. So we had to and narrow it down. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So, and the easiest place to start, I don't know about Ukraine, but in a place like New Zealand and um, US and Australia that I can talk about is through um, universities. They all have some programs and they all invite external speakers. This is to get practice. Then meetups, look at meetups and go to your local meetups and they're often looking for speakers. Mm -hmm. um, so last year- Actually, I we, we, we host meetups oh, in yeah, our yeah. office. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but those are to... mostly uh, technical. So the, the, they pick a, yeah. tech, a tech subject mm -hmm. uh, from what they're working on and they yeah. come and speak about it. Yeah, but you know, there's meetups on, on any topic you can think of. <laughs> there's meetups on, you know, <laughs> how to learn magic or art or it doesn't matter or business or management or and then you find a meetup um, that's on magic would do <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, how, say, do, you, how yeah. do you magically find the niche for your company? Yes, right? yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> how to magically find customers <laughs> out of thin air? Yes. So yeah, yeah. So just yeah, just find a niche, mm -hmm. and or just doesn't even have to be. This is to get practice because you know you're not on the on your first talk. They're not going to invite you to TED, you know, to be, uh, give a speech. So we have, we need 
practice. So that's what I'm doing. So I started a year ago. And last year I did speak. I got three paid speaking events, mm -hmm. or I think two or three paid, and the remaining were free. So I do one a month, mm -hmm. um, just to keep building as a practice. Uh, That's cool. That's a very valuable insight. This yeah. is what I'm looking for with this. Yeah, project. yeah, yeah. The management section. Yes. So how do you manage utilization of your resources? Are all of your resources always on projects, or is there any idle time that you? Uh, that you um, that since we have been the in the growth mode, um, we haven't had idle time, mm -hmm. but we use Basecamp. So we've tried different softwares to manage resources and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, we've used Teamwork, we've used Trello, we've used um, different CRM type things. But now we finally settled on Basecamp. Have you heard of Basecamp? Of course, yeah, yes. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah. used it, but mostly for document management for, yes. for, for projects. Uh, because uh, since we build by the hour, we, yes. we also need to track hours somewhere. Yes. And what we use internally is Jira. Jira. Yes. Jira, yes. and yes. for uh, knowledge base, it's uh, Confluence, also from Atlassian. Oh, sorry, which one? I'll write down Confluence. Confluence. Uh, Confluence. Yeah. It's it's uh, also an Atlassian product. Yes. The same comp the same company uh, that makes Jira. Yes. So how often do you introduce new practices in your company? New practices meaning that uh, you did uh, iOS and now you also want to do Android, or you did uh, I don't know manual testing. We and are and all the me. time because we are still exploring and finding out what's the best way to to fulfill what needs we have um, and also you know the niche our niche would change slightly because entrepreneurs and founders and startups have different ideas and they could be in so many different fields you know they could be marketplaces SaaS products um, mobile apps could be anything AR VR gaming tech so then we as we get more and more projects we'd know that, okay, most of our projects are just in this niche, mm -hmm. and we will just narrow, d narrow it down on one niche and then ignore everything else, because then we have a lot more reusable code base mm -hmm. and a um, more, lot more resources in just that. So we are still exploring stage. Since we are still new, we would know within, by, by the end of this year, we would know, you know, that, okay, most of our clients are in this, so let's just go on this. Then we'd be able to build products much faster and all that build MVPs much, much faster. Mm -hmm. That's when we will really look into a product. Once we know all the demand that is in this, can we productize our solution? Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, speaking of processes, uh, yes. do you document a lot of projects and processes? Like, first of all, uh, documentation on projects? We are using Basecamp for documentation. Mm -hmm. But and, still, and how, did, how, how, how did he's really good at that? So mm -hmm. he has been documenting everything that we are doing. So, in a way, what we our goal is that we want to make this company so that it can run without the co-founders. It can run on its own. So, we are trying to. We will see how successful we are <laughs> um, to document everything, and so anyone can come in at any stage and just take over and do our job kind of thing. Yeah, that's important. Uh, how I describe it normally is that we want to avoid the bus factor. You know the bus factor? Yes, you get hit by a bus. Uh, right, so yes. Right. So if the yeah. person who has all the knowledge gets hit by a bus, a bus. You, yes. lo you lose uh, the yeah. entire yes. grip on the project. Yes. And that's something that you want to avoid. Yes. Um, all right. And how about the internal processes? You also docu do document them, right? Parole. Or uh, yes. you haven't done yes. that yet? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, marketing. Yes. So you told me that you got your degree in marketing in, in yes. New Zealand, and yes. how much do you apply it to this uh, to the present? It has activity? changed so much. You know, I did marketing in um, 2003. I finished, mm -hmm. <laughs> and since then it's changed. 2003, 2004, something. Yeah, a lot. But the the core things remain the same. You need to build a brand. If people know your brand, they will trust you. It takes multiple occurrences of them seeing your brand like nine times or something before they start trusting it so they have to see it so many different places and all that so that's why we're trying to do all is that, that the rule nine, nine pretty times pretty much nearly uh, before they start trusting it mm -hmm. and all that so it's just like you know if you see an ad on facebook you don't know if it's a scam or not 
But if you're seeing the same one in a billboard and a TV and heard about it in a radio or a podcast by someone you trust, mm-hmm. and then suddenly you're like, oh no, this must be a real legitimate company. We can deal with them. We can work with them. Mm-hmm. Um, they won't just run away. And in New Zealand, a lot of people have had bad experience of outsourcing, especially to India and stuff because of cultural differences and because you know in like in India the culture is like you know you don't say no to your boss so you thank you this is exactly what I what I know yes, about yes yes so you know that's you why don't, that's why I uh, teach can, my, my staff to, yes. to, to, to let uh, our customers and also their boss know that there is a problem coming yes to avoid the um, the death march yeah, anti- yeah pa- anti- pretty pattern. much when everyone is working towards a deadline that is not going to be met. <laughs> met yes. And that yeah. is called the dead march. Yeah, the, yeah. The dead march. <laughs> and it's not only that, it's just that even if they don't have the skill in particular area, not everyone has knows every language, you know, or like every um like every programming language or every build everything so then it's better to say no and you know that you cannot do it but it is very very hard to culturally say no and disappoint someone but eventually it will end up in disappointment yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a so, bigger problem so yeah and then people have been burned and they've ended up with half built apps or apps don't work or all sorts of things and so then they have low trust to start with <laughs> a lot of the projects. But th- then does it make sense to position yourself not as outsourcers but rather than an agency? Because yes. it's a different wording. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. We don't say that. We yeah, we don't say that. But that's what they think because they don't. Our clients don't know coding. That's why they're going to someone. So to them, they went to someone and it didn't work out. Now they're going to someone else. <laughs> so, but that's that's just. Yeah, that's just how it is. <laughs> All right. So you said about nine uh, times that uh, people interact with the brand. Yes. Do you use any online advertisement uh, besides uh, Google AdWords? Maybe some retargeting on social networks? Um, we will be doing, fa- we want to do a video. So mm-hmm. we will be using an, a Kiwi company to do a proper video for us and do like a nicer video and then do that video marketing on Facebook and stuff and all that and, and try that in Sydney as well and yeah, in mm-hmm. Australia as well. So that's the plan for Feb and March. End of Feb, we record the video. It's great parties in Norway. Yeah. Yeah, it works much better than yeah. Stadium. Because people members. see and people like, you know, mm-hmm. get testimonials from our clients and all that. We're well, very happy to. Th- this is what we've been collecting recently as well. Yes. Uh, we've been uh, trying to get as many video reviews as possible because yeah. previously we only had text. Yeah. And now when there is a real person speaking about uh, their experiences yes. working with us, it's, uh, of That's course, it's much more trust, yeah. much, uh, much more persuasive. Yeah. All right. What, what else about marketing? Oh, I mean, I think that's, that's what, about what are the plans? it. But the book is, is a kick-ass marketing. How long yeah. did it take you to write it? A month. A month. Because we ha- it's called 30 Day Startup, so we have to do it in 30 days. But the second one will take me ages because the, that one is not 30 days. That's about different topic on, on in business when you decide when you should pivot and when you should keep persisting, you know. So that's what I'm writing my second book on. Mm-hmm. So that, that's just for fun. That I'm just doing it for myself. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Um, did, did, uh, have you read any uh, any other books on startups before you wrote this one? Um, I am quite inspired by reading Lean Startup and Zero to One. Those are, those two, are popular books. Yeah, yeah. yeah those are. Um, plus, I like um, Innovators Dilemma by Clay Christensen, and I like Good to Great, and no, oh, quite a few lo- long list of books that I like. All right. Did, did you feel like you are repeating Martin. some thoughts from those books or uh, was it different? A few, but then I had lots of, um, pretty much the 30 day startup is just like case studies, case studies of um, all the MVPs that were built in 30 days and they did well. And then the, that's the first half of the book, a lot of that's written by Will. And the second half that's written by me is on gro- in growing it because my experience is on growth. And so I've got stories on all the companies that I worked for or I owned and how I grew them and what marketing I did. So like for the gaming startup, I did a lot of influencer marketing and like Twitch and YouTube and things like that. And Have you thought about influencer marketing for your uh, current uh, um, venture? I have, but um, 
it works a l- much better in B to C than B to B. So I was like, oh, maybe we're better off spending that money in making a video with testimonials and stuff instead of yeah. Um, what else? The I talk about partnerships. I talk about all sorts of different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a great idea. I can write, write it down because um, from a video with testimonials. I mean, wha- once you've collected a bunch, yes. you can make a video out of them. Yes. Maybe with key phrases, yeah. one after another. Yes, and totally. It's, it's, it's I, what about you guys? What's your main marketing channel? Oh, so <laughs> we tried uh, um, a lot. Yes. And um, what worked out well is content marketing, of course. Yes. So you got to be publishing articles uh, regularly. Yes. Uh, what works well with the uh, with current customers or the leads who we keep close yes. is uh, social media. Mm-hmm. So when you post something and uh, you know your customers are happy that something is going on, something yes. is happening in your company, be it a kids' uh, yeah. uh, day in the office, or be it uh, like um, I don't know, a married couple, yes. or be it a New Year's party, yeah, or yeah. be it a new customer, new testimonial. Yeah something they are happy to see it and they are happy yes. to see that you uh, that you are progressing as a company you are yes. uh, going further that that oh, helps totally yeah totally yeah and of course we've been doing a lot of uh, search engine optimization yes and this is how we are getting also pretty much the same uh, amount of leads online as you do yeah, yeah through the website oh that's really really yeah. good and, and now i'm trying to separate out the marketing for my main brand red yes. And I also have a brand for quality assurance services. So yes. we do quality assurance uh, um, testing manually yeah. and uh, automated. Yes. So they, and we are uh, marketing that under another brand. Oh, very Which, cool. which yeah. works better because if it's yes. all things for all people, yeah. if it's it the same work. brand, the yes. same company doing uh, yeah. both development and testing, yes. and testing. Obviously, we need to have testing as an in, in, uh, integral part of yes. our uh, development operation yes. uh, for the development brand. But uh, apparently, there is a lot of demand for for testing for oh, an independent independent yes. testing. Yeah, and what I'm also contemplating recently is that we need to add another practice there. Uh, which is uh, penetration testing. Yeah, and so yeah. Some, uh, oh, totally. It demand. is just gonna get bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, all right. Seth. Yes. Thank you. Thank no you very problem. much for uh, for talking to me. Yeah. I got some quite valuable insights that yeah. I'm gonna bring yeah. back home. Yes. Uh,